Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I am again going to be editing a photo from beginning to end using Luminar Neo. Today, we're going to be processing a portrait. And for those of you not familiar with Luminar Neo or Luminar AI for that matter, I think you'll be surprised at how easy it is to process a portrait using Luminar. Now, what I like to do is to crop my image if it needs cropping right away. Now, I want to specify that the order I do things uh, isn't really written in stone. Just over the years, I've developed a way to do things and I do things in certain orders that work well for me. And I encourage you to experiment with whatever post-processing application you use to come up with a sequence of events that works well for you and your images. Personally, I like to crop probably right away, the first thing I do. Now I do like the composition of this image, but I do want to show you a couple things about the crop tool. So I am going to open up the crop tool. And the first thing I want to show you is this little box right here. If you need to flip the crop for, from a horizontal crop to a vertical or vice versa, you would just click right there and you could see that I've made that now a vertical crop. Now it says transposed and that's what you're doing. You're transposing the crop, but I don't like that tight kind of uh, two to three ratio crop. So I'm going to go to a four to five. So it's just going to give us a little more room on the side. So it's going to tighten up the composition a little bit. I like it. So when you're ready with, you know, and you like the crop just to commit to it, just close down the crop tool. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to get rid of this stray hair right here. So we're going to go to the erase tool. Now, unfortunately, the erase tool you never really could seem to get it small enough. Uh, let me take the size all the way down. And you can see that's as small as I could get it. And of course, the hair is a lot finer than that. But what I found, it still will work fine, but you got to kind of play with it a little bit. Meaning when you have a long hair such as this, don't try to try to take out the entire hair like all in one false swoop like this. So once you draw it on, you just click erase. I think what you find if you do that is it doesn't look right. You see how it's all smudgy? So I'm going to reset that. You can see you just click that backwards arrow and then do it in pieces. So do like a little piece there, a little piece there, something like that. Click erase. And I think you'll find that it will work out a little better. Now you're, it takes a little longer, but it just seems to work better if you do it in smaller chunks. So that's what I'm going to do here. And you can see now it looks much better than it was looking when I was trying to do the entire uh, hair all in one fall soup. So I did that. Now there's a couple little marks here. It looks like uh, kind of little scars maybe from chicken pox. That's what it looks like to me. A couple little blemishes up here. Take these out. I'm just going to click around. There's also like a blemish here. I'm going to take that out like that. Click erase. Now, personally, I don't like to remove anything that is permanent, like a mole, unless the model or customer asks me to. So any little like freckles and things like that, I would leave. But anything that's more temporary, like a blemish, I'll uh, zap those and get rid of those. And that would make that one worse. Every now and then you'll see it'll make it worse. You just got to keep painting over it until you get it gone. So that looks pretty good. So... Um, I'm done. I got rid of that hair and I got rid of a couple blemishes. I have the image cropped. Now I want to go to the develop tool. Now it doesn't say develop raw, even though this is a raw file. It's a DNG file, but it is not a manufacturer's raw file. So you won't get uh, any profiles up at the top. Now the like black background to me isn't black enough. So I'm actually going to jump right down to the blacks and whites and I'm going to bring down the blacks quite a bit and open up the whites just a little bit. Give a little more contrast when I do that. And I think you see it. It looks better already. Um, typically, if you're taking portraits in a studio situation, you, you'll find you don't have to do as much develop processing, meaning your light uh, section here, these adjustments usually will be spot on. You might have to just touch them up a little bit. But usually you just have to come in and do the whites and blacks, particularly if you have a black background or if you have a white background, you may have to move those two sliders. And in this case with the black background, I did. So that is that. I'm not too concerned with 
her kind of flyaway hair because she has her hair pulled back. That kind of looks natural to me. I don't think that's a problem at all. I just wanted to get rid of that hair that was on her face. So, so far, so good. Um, the shot low ISO. There really is no noise. I don't have to worry about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump right down to the portrait section. Portrait bokeh is to create blur behind the subject, uh, but that isn't needed here. But we're going to jump right down to face AI. Let me scroll that up. We're going to make her face a little brighter. Um, I'm not going to slim face. I never do that. Uh, the only way, I've never done that. The only reason, though, I may want to do that is if I used a, a wide-angle lens and I was really close to the subject and it distorted their features, um, I might move the slim face to try to compensate for that wide-angle lens. But I've never had to do that. Let's go to eyes. Um, iris visibility is already uh, set at 80. I'm not going to replace her irises with another one. You can see you could like go to a blue iris. Kind of looks silly, doesn't it? A green. But I'm going to stay with the original. I think it, she has nice eyes. It looks good. We will add a flare. You can see when I had the flare, it just adds kind of a light at the bottom as though you had a fill light uh, down here at the bottom or a reflector or something. Just to add a little light to her eyes. I'm not going to enlarge her eyes, although at times I have. Uh, sometimes if the model has their head tilted a little bit and you're not using like a 85 to 105 millimeter lens, you're using something wider, it'll make the eye that is closer to the camera appear much bigger than the eye that is a little bit further away from the camera. So sometimes you have to move in large eyes to compensate for that. Um, whitening, we'll whiten them up. We don't want to go too crazy, right? Just a little bit. Um, what I found when you're processing a portrait is even though you're doing different things, like you're whitening the eyes, you're adding iris flare, you're adding enhancing eyes, and you're doing these things, all different it all in a way is cumulative and when you're all said and done you'll find you have an overprocessed portrait so you need to really be careful uh, eye enhancer you see you don't want to give her like marbles so just a little bit red eye removal isn't for removing blood vessels in the white part of the eye that's for the red eye that you would get from some flashes that's not needed here dark circle removal she does have some dark circles and i'm going to slowly move that to the right and you watch under her eyes you'll see that dissipate See that? That does a pretty good job. I'm going to max that right out. Her eyebrows are great. I don't think I need to make them darker. That's really what Improve Eyebrows does. We'll go to Mouth. I want to make her lips a little more saturated. I don't really need to make them any redder. I don't want to make it look like she's wearing lipstick. And I don't want to make them darker. I think I like them the way they were or are. I just want to saturate them a little more. And... Her teeth aren't showing, so teeth whitening is not applicable. So we're done with that face section. Let's go to the skin section. And we'll turn the amount up. What I do is I just move it up. Just see what it looks like. I'll click on skin defects removal. And it looks decent. I'll back it off maybe a little bit. Shine removal. You see it has some shine on her nose here and here under her eye and up in here on her forehead. I'll move that to the right and you can see how. See how that's taking care of the shine? Now, I don't want to totally remove the shine. It's making the image too flat. I do want a little bit of shine there. All too often, I see photographers just want the shine totally eliminated. That's fine if that's your style. But I, can't, I want a little bit of shine there. I just didn't want it like that. So pretty much like that. Skin defects removal, I already really removed uh, the blemishes and whatnot with the... Um, the uh, erase tool so this really isn't doing anything for this so actually i think i'm done um let me give you a before after i think you'll be surprised how different it looks there's before and there is after there's before and there is after now what i would strongly recommend you do is do what i do Walk away from your computer for a while and let your eyes rest and your brain reset. Then come back and look at the image and you'll probably see something jump out at you that you over-processed. Like right away when I did the before-after, I think I overdid her irises. Her irises look maybe a little bit overdone. I'm going to leave them like that for now, but that may be overdone, so I'd walk away. 
What you most often don't want to do, unless you're doing an advertising campaign for like Chanel perfume or something like that, you don't want to misrepresent the person. You want to make them look their best as though they had a, a you know, $100, $500 an hour makeup artist doing their makeup, but you don't want to make them look like they're somebody else. That's at least the way I go about doing it. And it's worked well that way for me. So I think that looks pretty good. One more time. There's before. And there is after. Before. And after. That's it. That's how I go about processing a portrait using Luminar Neo. Again, this is a short video series I'm doing where I'm going to be processing different types of images using Luminar Neo. And hopefully uh, throughout the whole series, you'll be able to see uh, several of the tools and how I go about using them and how I go about processing images uh, in various situations. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.